Hi guys! Happy Thursday. I'm a little late today. Hang on a second. Alexa, stop. Sorry, I was listening to Michael Blue play while I got ready. It is Thursday. It is 2 o'clock. I'm a little late today, but you know how that goes. We are going to make a homemade chicken pot pie. It is very easy, very fast. I call this another one of those kitchen sink kind of recipes because you just kind of find whatever veggies you have around and you put it in and it turns out delicious. And you are also going to probably want to use a refrigerated pie crust. This is the perfect opportunity to do that. Refrigerated pie crusts are amazing. I personally like the Red Box ones. I'm not going to give you the brand name because I don't even remember. I think it's Pillsbury. But um, I personally love the Red Box ones and I use that often. So I actually already have my pie crust laid out in my pan in my refrigerator. So it's staying cold while I get the, the, the crust or the filling made up. <clears throat> okay, so the filling is really easy. I know a lot of people make um, chicken pot pie with cream soup. I double dog dare you to try this, okay? Because it's really fast and really easy. So we're gonna start by melting uh, two tablespoons of butter, if I can find my butter. Here it is. And remember to always use unsalted butter because you can always add salt, but it's hard to take it out again. So we got two tablespoons of unsalted butter we're gonna melt and I put it into um, a Dutch oven pan. A uh, large skillet would work. I am just notorious for putting for, for overfilling everything. So now I've gotten to where I choose a larger pan, pan, larger pan than I think I need. So because inevitably I, I choose one that's too small. So I'm trying to avoid that today. Um, so we're gonna have two tablespoons of butter going on in there and then I'm gonna add an onion. I personally think an onion is necessary for every kind of a pot pie you make. You kind of need an onion unless your kids really hate them. Good morning, Karen. Karen, tell me where you're coming from. I am in Minnesota, and it is a beautiful, beautiful crisp day. Although, I took my dogs downtown for a walk, which is a big deal here because um, getting the kids, the dogs, getting the kids, they are kind of like kids, getting the dogs in the car, taking them downtown, and finding parking and all that. Well, I was so excited because I found parking because there's like three empty lots, no cars, and wouldn't you know, I was down there maybe 20 minutes and I got a parking ticket. Seriously. Most expensive walk my dogs have been on in a while. I'm so irritated. Good morning, Alicia. Good afternoon. Look how festive and beautiful you look today. Ah, oh, thank you. I had a meeting today and so I um, got dressed properly and all the things. Not that I don't get dressed properly for you guys, but it's a little bit different. Good morning, Linda. Linda, where are you coming from? Paulette. Onions and garlic go in just about everything. Agree. Absolutely agree, except for sweets. Although I have been known to put some onion and garlic in some uh, cake before. You'll have to ask me about that question, about that recipe someday. I would love to know what kind of recipes you guys would be interested in. I'm kind of going off the cuff on my favorites, but I'd love to know if there's anything that you guys um, are always looking for, particularly with winter coming up. I do a lot of soup in the winter time. That's like my go-to favorite thing. And it comes from, I'm the oldest of 10, those of you that don't know, and soup is just one of those recipes. Well, not only is it because I'm the oldest of 10, I was also a youth leader for about eight years. And we inevitably would have anywhere from eight to 40 kids in our house um, on a Friday evening. And soup is just one of those recipes that you can just stretch as far as it needs to go. So I've just kind of, really just been about making soup and stews and all those kinds of things. So they're one of my favorites. Alicia, my kids have been asking me for chicken pie now for a month. Oh, well, and here you go. So we're gonna put in an onion. You guys, I never cut the very ends. I'm always afraid I'm gonna cut my fingers. Food waste, although I will save that and put it into a uh, broth, so it's not a complete waste. All right, proper, you guys, I'm gonna flip my knife over. So many of you guys have been messaging me about flipping my knife over instead of using the sharp edge. There you go. I flipped my knife over. All right, so there's our onion. Okay, homemade bread. Ah, oh, yeah, I make good homemade bread. So we will do that um, maybe next week. I'm not sure what we got next week. Paulette, soup, stews, biscuits, and cornbread. All right, so we are all about the carbs. I'm on board with carbs any day. You guys ever made sweet biscuits? Oh, I actually got the ingredients to make um, for you guys. Have you ever made the Mountain Dew Apple Biscuits? Pioneer Woman has a version of them. They're really tasty. Okay, so I have a stock of celery. 
I personally think onion and celery are kind of a must have in a pot pie, but you don't have to have it if you don't have celery, that's okay. But I'm just gonna put in one stalk of celery. Good morning, Grandma. My grandma's watching, isn't that adorable? Yesterday, my sister Tessa was watching. My sister Tessa just went over to South Korea. She is in the Air Force. And, oh, I forgot. And so she was watching at some random strange time yesterday. It was pretty adorable, actually. 7-Up Biscuits. Paulette, is 7-Up is Biscuits the ones with the apples in them? Because I'm pretty sure that's kind of the same thing. And we should, um, I'm going to do that um, for you guys. If you've never made 7-Up Mountain Dew Biscuits, they're called, it's basically, I'm cutting my, I'm um, peeling my, app, my carrot with a carry knife because my peeler is in the dishwasher. And I'm too lazy to wash it. Um, so 7 of biscuits are basically where you take biscuit, uh, not biscuit, well you can use biscuit, but it is a uh, crescent roll dough and you wrap a bit of apple in the crescent roll dough and then you um, pour over some melted butter and some Mountain Dew and you basically bake it like that. And the Mountain Dew and the butter mix together with a little bit of sugar, wait, a lot of sugar. With the sugar, all makes this beautiful like sweet bread and it's really good. So if you have never made that, let me know. I think that's one we should probably do around here. Diana, did you put the onion and celery in the butter? Oh yes, I am sorry, I'm too busy talking to you guys. Um, we have one onion and one stalk of celery in here, and this is two tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna turn it down so it doesn't burn. And I'm about to add one stalk of carrot, one stalk of carrot, one carrot. <laughs> one carrot to the mix. I'm going to cut it fairly small. Agnes, hi Agnes from Scotland. You love chicken, onions, and garlic. I know, there's nothing better than that. Especially in the winter now, it's starting to get cool around here. Did you... So yeah, so I had my first parking ticket this morning that I've had in a good long time. And I was kind of irritated and then I was like, eh, it happens. It was my fault. I mean, I technically saw the sign, ignored the sign, and I was like, I'm gonna be here for all the 15 minutes. There's 100 parking spots. What are the odds of the parking attendant coming through? Very good, apparently. You know, the funny thing is, I even stopped to talk to the parking attendant. He pet the dogs, asked me how we were, and then gave me a ticket. Seriously. Should have bribed him with some cookies or something. So tonight, you guys, tonight is football. It's a Thursday night, but it's a Viking game tonight, and I'm very excited. I went and got myself, my husband went and got me some gluten-free beer. So I don't, I try not to eat gluten or dairy, despite what you see here. <laughs> um, and I'm excited to try it and see, see if it's any good. It's kind of an oxymoron, I think, but... So how many of you guys drink beer? I don't usually drink beer, but it feels like with football, hang on a second. Hey, puppies. I got carrots. I'm gonna give my puppy some, come here. One for you. Oh, Fitzgerald doesn't want one apparently. I had this meeting earlier today and it was on the internet. So it was like a video meeting. And I, hey, in order to keep them quiet, I gave them bones. So I think that they are um, full. They had walk downtown where we got a ticket and they got bones. So, oh no, it's a good dog day. All right, so we've got our carrot in here. We got our onion, we got our celery. If you had a, you guys, if I had a chopper, I should buy a chopper, a ninja, just so I could do this faster with you guys. I, but see, the thing of it is, is I like sitting here and chopping. It like, my mind slows down. And I don't do anything but think about chopping. So I actually really do like chopping. It just, I suppose it takes too long for me to, to do that and talk to you guys. Agnes, never made, you've never made chicken pot pie before? <gasps> I'm so excited for you. So first of all, this recipe is already live on my site. It's an old recipe. It's been on there for a very long time. And I'm rejuvenating it a little bit, getting some new photos up there. Um, but it's there and it's already amazing. That's what I'm using today. So this is one carrot, one stalk of celery, one onion in two tablespoons of butter. 
that's what we got going on here. And then from here, go ahead and add in any other veggies you want to use up in your kitchen. I have some kale that's, that's not looking so good that I'm going to add to our pot pie. I'm going to chop it down pretty small though because nobody wants to get a big old chunk of kale in their pot pie. Um, I would recommend, recommend mushrooms. Potatoes, if you have them, would be really good. And on my site, on the recipe, you'll get the recipe for like what is like the basic best version, I think, which is going to be potatoes, carrot, onion, celery, mushrooms. Those are what I think are, you know, your standard, standard chicken pot pie. But today, I'm just going to make whatever I have laying around in the kitchen. That needs to get used up. We're trying to go for what they call a, a spending freeze. Has anyone ever done that before where you like take a week and you say, all right, not spending any money, not buying any groceries. We're going to use everything we've already got on hand. That's what we're doing right now. And so, except for the gluten-free beer. Forgot about that. <laughs> um, so, I'm trying to not to go buy groceries just because. So, that's what we're doing now. Paulette, I don't drink alcohol, but have a non-alcoholic beer once in a while. Oh, yeah. There are some good ones. I bet there are. There are going to be so many good things out there. Ignis never made it. Thank you for sharing the recipe. You are welcome. All right, so we added in the kale, the onion, the garlic. No, onion, the carrot, the celery. Now I'm going to add in the garlic. I'm going to add in two cloves of garlic. You can add in three or four, depending on what, you, what your family prefers. A little garlic press. How many of you guys have garlic presses? Seriously, they're like the best things ever. I swear they like practically paint your house for you. They're so good. They're so useful. I love them. That's two of them. And one more. All right, so there's three cloves of garlic. All of our veggies. Now I'm going to be using some frozen veggies, but I don't want to put my frozen veggies in here until the very end because they will get mushy. If you put them in right away, they kind of get mushy and they don't taste as fresh. But if you put them in right before this is done and then you put it in the oven, they will kind of stay nice and tender. Especially like your corn and your peas, they'll still kind of snap in your mouth a little bit and won't get mushy like frozen veggies can do. So put the tip for you, put it in last, okay? Good morning, Carol, Carlina. Good morning, Kenneth from Denton, Maryland. Good morning, Louisiana. Carlina, you're in Louisiana. I want to go there someday. I haven't been. Okay, so now we need to make this into like a gravy kind of concept, right? So we have all of this stuff in here cooking up in this butter. We're going to add in our flour here. Not after our liquid, before our liquid, okay? So, I'm gonna grab my flour. Hey, if you guys were here yesterday, you remember that we were installing our, the flooring and my house was a disaster. Look at my kitchen is getting clean now. And it's looking pretty dang cute, although there is like a layer of construction dust over everything. I've been cleaning like crazy. I have a cleaner coming in to help. All right, so a third a cup of flour. I know that's a lot of flour, but we're putting a lot of liquid in here, okay? Good morning, Janie from Graham, Texas. April from Laplace, Louisiana. Good morning, Karen from Ireland. Wow, good morning, Carolyn. Okay, we're gonna stir up all of this in that butter um, and cook and just kind of get it coated really, really well. It's not gonna disappear completely because there's not enough liquid in there for it to disappear, okay? I'm gonna see if I can show you guys what this looks like. I'm gonna try to, be, try to... See how the flour is not, the flour is not completely disappeared? Some people were complaining about um, the way we have, I have a video set up. I did try again today, you guys, to change the video setup so you could see better, but it's really hard with my kitchen setup to do. I'm gonna keep working on it, but I haven't done it yet. Karen, is your fridge out of the middle of the kitchen? It is! I will show you at the very end what it looks like, but it is back where it's supposed to be. 
Mary from Laredo, Texas. Good morning, Mary. Terry from Southwest Florida. Mm, that sounds like a good place to be. Katina, I hope I said that, from Min Minita Minitaire, Nebraska. And Tammy from Springfield, Missouri. Good morning. Okay, so our flour is in here. We have a third of flour in with our veggies. And we're going to put in some spices. I'm going to put salt and pepper and thyme. Those are my favorites. And anything else you guys want to put in, go for it. But I highly recommend you use thyme. Now here in Minnesota, my garden, I'm out of herbs now. I used all my fresh herbs and now I'm back to using dried herbs. I could go to the grocery store, but again, I'm not buying things if I don't have to. <laughs> Trying to save money for Christmas, you guys, because Christmas is always so expensive. All right, so I'm putting in a teaspoon of pepper, a teaspoon of thyme, and a teaspoon of salt. Okay, and then we're gonna put in our liquid. Give us a Good morning, Terry. Good morning, Clara from Maryland. Tracy, I'm watching you, your mad skills, and thinking you should be one of our cooks in the competition next year. Good morning, Terry. I don't know about that. <laughs> Agnes, all those veggies look healthy. Well, yeah, until we start adding other stuff. Hold tight, we'll make it kinda not healthy again here pretty soon. April from Louisiana. Good morning, April. All right, so now we got our flour in, we got all this in, we're gonna put in our chicken broth. Okay, so you wanna use really good chicken stock if you have it. I made up some broth this morning. So I'm taking it straight from my pan. You guys, this pan has been with me forever. It's crap, I love it though. And I'm putting it straight into this broth, into this. Can you hear that sizzle? Here, let me go like this. Ah! There. It's going straight in. Can you hear it? It's boiling up a little bit. And now we wanna get this stirred up really good and this is gonna start making our gravy, okay? Good morning, Lorna. Good morning, Lorna. Gwendolyn from Dem 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 Demopolis, Alabama. I said that incorrectly. Gwendolyn. I like that name. That's a cool name. Sandra. Hello, Agnes. Is it white or black pepper? It is actually black pepper, but if you have white pepper, this would be a really great opportunity to use white pepper. All right. So our broth, our chicken broth is in here, but we're not done with our liquid yet, okay? Um... So we're gonna use one, let me, let me look at my recipe here. One cup more of liquid. You can use cream. You can use half and half. You could use almond milk or, hold on. Hold. We're gonna use white wine. So let me tell you a little something, something about a chicken, about a chicken pot pie. A hearty, traditional chicken pot pie, you're gonna wanna use like your dairy and your chicken broth, totally fine. If you wanna do like an elevated chicken pot pie where it's like for company coming over and you're gonna use like three different kinds of mushrooms and you're gonna have like some really cool veggies in there, go with the wine. It totally jacks up your entire chicken, jacks up, that's the wrong word. Jacks up your entire um, chicken pot pie and makes it more like fancy. Um, good morning, Carolina. We're making a chicken, homemade chicken pot pie this morning. Right in here on low, I've got simmering up of uh, one onion, one stalk of celery, one carrot, two tablespoons of butter that it was all sauteed up in, a little bit of garlic. Then we just added a third of a cup of flour before we added in our cup and a half of chicken broth. And now I'm putting in a cup of white wine. You guys, if I had any leftover real white wine, not just cooking wine, that would be going in right about now. And remember, if you guys, you know, if you have alcohol, you're, use, you know, you're, you're against using alcohol, I want to remind you that when you do something like this, the alcohol cooks out and it just leaves the flavor in. The other thing about alcohol with any kind of a meat is it is a great tenderizer. Alcohol and uh, beer and beef, beer just tenderizes up all that beef. It's so good. April, tell your mom who's 86, hi from Louisiana. Is that, what, is that correct? Hi, April's mom. Carlina, Katina, what kind of white wine? Okay, so I'm actually using, I worked with this company, Holland House. This is just your cooking wine that you get at the grocery store. But again, I would use pretty much anything. Um, a Chardonnay or Sauvignon Blanc would probably be what I would be drinking. And that's what I would be putting in. If there was any leftover, which there's not. So <laughs> I guess that's not gonna happen today. All right, I have to duck a little bit because of the way I changed that. All right, so now we're gonna turn this up and get this boiling again. We're almost to the part where we're gonna stick in our chicken, all right? Before we stick in our chicken, we wanna taste this, make sure there's enough seasoning in there and that it tastes good. 
Pamela saying hello from Vermont. I've never been and I want to go. It sounds beautiful, especially this time of year. April. Okay, good. I'm glad. All right, you guys. So yesterday when I walked away, that was kind of messy. And now when I walk away, look, it's looking better, isn't it? All right, I'm going to give this a taste and see how we're doing. Mmm, so good. Mmm. Oh, that's good. That wine still has to taste down a little bit. You're doing top and bottom crust. I am, yes, but I am doing a bottom crust. So what I'm doing is I took my crust. Let me get it. Hang on. I got to go to my fridge. That's in the correct spot. Hello. That's awesome. All right. So here's my crust. Um, I used a prepared refrigerated crust and I, and I pressed it out further than they, it comes. So I put it between two parchment papers and I rolled it out. So I have this, popped it in the fridge, and you can either blind bake this. So you're gonna get a soggy crust if you put this filling straight into this crust and then go and bake it. 400 degrees, I forgot. Um, you'll get a soggy crust because all that liquid will hit this crust and it will make it not get nice and, and um, flaky. So first you either wanna blind bake it, which means you're gonna put it in the oven ahead of time and you're gonna bake it first. You're gonna, you, you can do that. Or what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna egg wash the bottom of the pie crust, then put my filling on top and that egg wash is gonna protect my pie crust from getting soggy. Susie, hello from Russell Springs. Katina, I am blurry. Ooh, I might be getting in the steam. Hang on a second. Tell me if that's better. That's why I kind of have it this way. Cynthia, hi from Baltimore. Never been there either. So this is that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put in a little bit of a lattice work on top of the, of the um, pot pie. If I were gonna make this for company, I would have two crusts. I would have a top and a bottom. But this one's just for my family and to show you guys, so I probably won't. Also because the other day I had made something with pies and so I used one of the pie crusts in the pie crust box. So yeah. Cynthia, hi from Baltimore. Karen, hi. All right, so this is just about done. We want it to thicken up. And if it's not thickening up the way you want it to, then this is the time that you could add in a little bit of a thickening slurry. And what that means is if you want something like a sauce to thicken, don't go put flour directly into the sauce. Or you'll get all kinds of gross little pockets of flour. It's disgusting. You wanna put a little flour and water or milk together in a glass, mix it up and then pour that in and then you will avoid all of your little pockets of flour that you don't wanna have, because that's disgusting. Nobody wants that. Better, Katina? All right, good. Yeah, I was in the steam. Steam in my face with chicken pot pie. All right, so now that this is thick, I'm gonna show you what this looks like, guys. It's gonna thicken up a little bit more, but there is what that looks like. Sometimes I take it right from here. Let me tell you something. If you wanted to, you could take this right from here Add a little bit more um, broth to it so it's not quite so thick. Drop in little biscuits. Purchase biscuits. Drop them in so they're about that big. And you have chicken and dumpling soup. Not even joking. Super fast and easy. Just drop that in. Should have done that. What the heck? Okay, good morning, Susan from Louisville. Paul Mahoney, cornstarch instead of flour. Yes, those of you that have any kind of experience with sauce, you should use cornstarch and water instead of flour and water. The only reason I say flour is because a lot of people don't know to use cornstarch and flour still works but it's not perfect yes you should use cornstarch yes <laughs> rosalinda taurus from ontario good morning rosalinda care karen we call i think you were finishing your sentence all right so i'm gonna make that egg wash real quick i'm gonna turn this on low so it just sits there and simmers and you guys it's so much fun I'm, I swear, I, I revert back to my 12-year-old status. Uh, I like to go down to the co-op and get these little speckled eggs. It's so much fun. There's little speckles on them. We call them dumplings, not biscuits. Yeah, so we call, so they're, okay, so they're the biscuits, the refrigerated biscuit dough that you'd get in the refrigerator section, and then when you drop them in, then they would turn into dumplings in this case. Okay, so here's an egg. I'm gonna take my fork. I'm gonna take my fork and I'm gonna whip it up. Tina Louise, dying to see how you do this. What are you dying to see? The egg wash, the chicken dumpling. Jeffrey from Denora, Pennsylvania. Good morning, good afternoon. Marina, Mariana, 
Mariana, beautiful name from New Zealand. Hi. All right, so egg, we're gonna put in about a tablespoon of water. All right, so we got egg and water. We're gonna get that whipped up really, really good. I'm actually gonna add a little bit of pepper to this so that it sticks to the crust. Oh, we're not doing the dumplings, Tina. I'm sorry. I was saying how if you wanted to do the dumplings, this is where you would do the dumplings. Instead, I'm putting this into a crust and making it into a pot pie. But right here, man, we should do the dumpling soup next time, shouldn't we? Okay, so I'm gonna move my stuff out of the way. Hang on, let me get my mess out of the way. So here's our crust. And I'm gonna take the egg wash and I'm gonna brush it over the bottom of the crust to protect the crust from all that liquid. Again, you could just blind bake. Blind bake is just baking it in advance. I find this works better for me because sometimes when I blind bake, it will get burnt and I obviously don't want that. So I'm gonna do this instead and this will prov provide um, the, the proteins in the eggs. So obviously eggs have protein, that's why we're supposed to have them for breakfast. But the, the protein in the eggs will get activated and will act as a barrier. Did you know that? It's kind of cool. So then I'll go like, oh, there we go. All right, so now we're going to put in our chicken. So you should have a cup and a half of chicken. This is all the chicken I had left over because I made um, chicken yesterday. Yesterday, the day before, or something like that. And my family kids kept snitching off of it. So when I went this morning to get chicken, it was only like half of what I had put in there. They kept snitching. I tell you, I have to hide things. H tip, hide things in the vegetable drawer. They don't look in there. Go dig in, they don't go dig into the back of the vegetable drawer. Jeffrey, making you hungry. Good, I'm glad. Chastity, so cool, you just learned something new. I hope so. Hopefully nothing hard either. We try to keep things simple. All right, so you guys, you should you should see this. This looks like something that would be good for you. Look at that. Mm, mm, mm. That's gonna be good for your soul, good for your body, good for your good for your taste buds, all the things. Okay, so I'm just gonna let this go for just a couple more minutes to thicken. Then I'm gonna pour it in here, bake it for about 30 minutes or until the, I'll put the crust things on top and then it'll be done and it's that easy. I don't know how long this video has gone, but you obviously it's double the time it normally would because I'm talking to you guys. So it's really fast. Tina, oh my gosh, it looks fabulous. Doesn't it look so good? Dumplings in that would be awesome. I agree. I'm looking at that right now going, we need to put dumplings in that baby. Mm, yeah, the other thing yesterday, no, Tuesday, you guys saw me make a, a meat pie and it had the puff pastry on the top. This is another instance where if you had a pan like this and you took puff pastry, just set that puff pastry on top of that and stuck it right in the oven. Like don't even bother with the pie crust. It'd be amazing. So this kind of a thing has so many uses if you know how to make it. It's got so many different kinds of things you could do. Um, and again, you can use, let's say you didn't use chicken broth, you use beef broth and you used steak you could have a steak pie. It'd be the same concept, just swap out your ingredients for a beef broth and then for a, a, um, a beef. Let's say you're a vegetarian. We've gotten this question a lot. You would use a veggie broth and then instead of meat, you would just add in beans or rice that's already cooked or some sort of a potato or a rutabaga and you would have a veggie pot pie, same concept. So you just swap out the, the matching broth with the matching meat, that's it. I did not put sage in it. So you guys, this is very simple. This one just has thyme, salt, and pepper. That's it. But if you are a spice person and you love your spices and you know your spices, pot pies like this is where you can play and have so much fun. I would probably put a bay leaf in this as I was cooking it. Um, and I would probably go out to my garden and get fresh parsley, maybe some rosemary if it was going to be something like that. If I was gonna do beef, I would use red wine instead of white wine. You get the idea. So if you're someone who likes to play, this is great for playing. If you're not, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Don't have to go fancy. All right, so I'm gonna pour this in. I gotta get two pot holders, and I'm gonna show you my kitchen, okay guys? Cause it's kind of clean, so I can kind of show it to you. So here we go. We're gonna pour this in.
Oh my gosh, gosh, I wish you guys could, could smell this. It smells so good. And this is gonna thicken up a little bit as it continues to bake in the oven. So we ended up with pretty much exactly, if I had had that extra cup of chicken, we would have come up exactly where I wanted it to be. And then I'm just gonna throw on these little strips of pie crust that I picked, that I stole. <laughs> I'm not really sure what the purpose is of these, but I'm gonna throw them on anyway. It seems a shame to waste it. <laughs> where are you? I am in Minnesota, right on the border of Wisconsin. And tonight is the Viking game. Thank you very much. Those of you that care about football and my fantasy league is, I am finally starting to beat the winner at fantasy. Okay, so you guys can see this. This is not pretty. Uh, yeah, not particularly beautiful, but I'm gonna pop it in the oven right now. There it goes. And bake it for 30 minutes. And let me show you my kitchen, just a sec. Let me pop this in. Now, I do think a full crust on top is better. I, there's just something special about that crust kind of popping up and then you cut into it and you got all that goodness in the center. There's something special about that. But again, I just didn't have the pie crust. Didn't want to make it. You get the idea. My hair looks really cute. Thanks, I just tried that this morning because in case you don't know the drama, I've been getting messages from people about how I touch my hair and all that. I was tempted today to come in with great big giant dish gloves <laughs> just to be obnoxious but I thought I'm gonna make sure my hair is put away all right you guys ready I'm gonna show you my kitchen this is brave on my part because it's not perfectly clean nobody likes to show people their dirty kitchens okay hold tight all right so this is where all of this stuff happens um and so this is the, the kitchen cabinets and look at here guys there's our tile there's the green this is actually going to be painted so this is this whole space that we've been working on over here. So we have the door installed, mostly painted. We have all that paneling done. All of this right here, let me move out, is going to be one giant built-in cubby system for our mudroom. And we're gonna paint it that pretty blue color. Then that's gonna run all the way along the bottom where there's gonna be a bench that runs all along the bottom. And then of course we added this door. This door wasn't there before. Don't look at that mess. And we added the paneling that all used to be beadboard, I mean um, popcorn. There's my new light. I love that light, so pretty. And then if you remember, this was all just a construction beam that we enclosed, painted. We're gonna add in trim all the way around. But we're getting there. It's getting there guys, getting there. So, April, did you put holes in the bottom of the crust? No, I did not. I, well, I put an egg wash on the bottom of the crust so that it would um, protect, oh, I can't get this back up. So that it would protect the, the um, crust from the filling seeping in. And, and so that's gonna take care of that problem. And then I didn't have to put slits on the top crust because I put just these little strips of, of crust because that's all I had. Um, Brenda, it looks good and you'll get it done in time. Thank you for showing us. Yeah, so I'm actually hoping to get the rest of it painted today and I'm gonna be stenciling that all of that wall back there. Um, I'm stenciling in a four color tropical print. So that'll be what all up there will be this really cool stencil. If you've ever stenciled before though, you know it is a lot of work. And this one's a four color stencil, so it has one stencil and then a second and then a third and then a fourth and it's just gonna be a lot. But um, I like to do that stuff sometimes because my brain doesn't think about anything except for, for painting, so it's kinda nice. Um, but that's all I have for you guys. The recipe for this is already live on my site. Uh, it, I don't need to, I'll, I'll make sure to put it in this video so you can get it. And I'll take a picture of this. Again, not gonna be beautiful because I didn't put the proper crust on the top but you'll get the general idea. And so you guys make this for your family. Ah, oh, I just realized I forgot the corn. This is live people. I have fresh corn that I like to put in, not fresh corn, frozen fresh corn, and I forgot it. Live, what can you do? 
All right, guys, I'm going to go get ready to watch Vikings, which is later tonight. Get the rest of my day finished. Um, you'll see me on Tuesday. Not going to be live tomorrow. And on Tuesday, hopefully, I got more to show you back there. And I have no idea what we're doing on Tuesday. There's a plan, but I don't know. All right. Good morning, Jana from Aloha. Aloha from Hawaii. Um, and reminder, if there's anything you guys would like to see made, things you want to know how to do, or a recipe, more recipes of something you want, make sure to comment. Let me know, and I'll try to make sure to get those ones on here. All right. You guys all have a great Thursday. Have a great weekend. I will see you on Tuesday.